It is said in Africa that when a lion roars, a ruler is born. For centuries, man has been in awe of the big cats. Egyptians worshipped them as gods, kings hunted them and wore their skins as an expression of their divine right to rule. The sorcerers of Africa took on their shapes to enter the spirit world. Coming to Africa was to realize an ambition to visit the land of the lions. Making the journey through the heat and the dust and perhaps finding the answers to the questions that for centuries have intrigued us about the King of the Beasts. Why has the lion been revered for so long? Why do we admire their ferocity? It has been a long journey. Let me tell you about it. My first sight of a lion was when I was a child. His great eyes. Such magnificence. And power. I was uh, about six years of age. My parents took me to the zoo, and like all children, I had my favorites, and these were my favorites, the lions, the big cats. It's what's fascinating about them, isn't it? Their independence, those eyes. Such omnipotence that must come from Sheer power, strength, independence, indifference. A real king. Ah. Like all kings, he has his food bought him. The image of that caged lion stayed in my mind. And since then, I've thought about lions, read about them, and the continent they roam. Could they ever be tamed or domesticated? I doubt it. Finally, I decided to go to Africa to see the lions in the wild for myself. It is strange that of all the creatures on Earth, the African lion became so central to Western cultures. For us, it represents royalty, power, dominion. But why did it become a hallmark of quality? The freshness of eggs, 
consistency of syrup, and, in Hollywood, a guarantee of more stars than in heaven. This is the first stage of my journey in Tanzania. This was the way people traveled into Africa early this century. Like life itself for those early travelers, building railways was a dangerous business. On one stretch in East Africa, lions halted construction when they devoured almost 30 railway workers. The man-eaters also pulled a hunter out of a carriage when it was stopped at a station and ate him. I'm taking the same journey as those adventurers before me. Settlers, missionaries, botanists, hunters. The brave, the foolhardy. They risked the dangers of the bush for the chance of a new life or a great safari. At the railhead town, I stopped to get provisions. These old frontier towns bustle with life. And in the old days, they played host to hunting parties, kings and queens, rich and famous, who made safaris during the good old days, always leaving for the bush with great ambition, later to return with the spoils and great yarns. If I'd come, say, 50 years ago, I'd have found the trophy hunters, eager for a head to hang on the wall, but there was much more to the lion than they might have imagined. Their stories of daring and courage somehow left out the real enigmas, nature's own puzzles. There are many strange stories about lions that emanate from Africa. Tales of fleeting glimpses of white lions, perhaps once every 20 years. We have an insatiable need to understand everything in our own terms. But there are many things no one can explain about the lions out in the bush. Why, for instance, was one of the last white lions killed by her own kind? Or why do male lions commit infanticide? To find out about lions, I must go out and see for myself. So, with some trepidation, I started out, on foot. In this area of Tanzania, just south of the equator, it is the height of the dry season. Only the riverbeds have any moisture. After the fires, and the green flash will attract uh, small animals. Yes. Uh, even impalas will like yeah. this green flash. Yes. Now, look at this adjacent bush. This yeah. is a good camouflage yes. for predators, yes. like lions. Yeah. So you're expecting lions here, waiting. Uh, and the small animals, yes. The small animals. Oh, I see, yes. So this is a good sign yeah. of, of looking for lions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My companion is an experienced tracker, Frank, who knows the dangers and is prepared for them. I hope. This is for elephants. Uh-huh. Yeah. You see how big they are? Yes. yes. Everything's here. The, the, the big cat. You see how it's... Where? This one here? This is a big lion. Yeah. This here? That's right. That's right. That's right. This is getting warmer, isn't it? Getting... Ah, what are these? No. Are they... Oh, no, these are small footsteps of bed, skin falls. Oh. Ah. So. I wouldn't be a very good tracker, would I? Yeah, these are small skin falls yeah. steps. Uh-huh. Yeah. The lion? Oh, yeah, it could be a small one. This one. It's definitely a cat. Well, she's it? around you, isn't she? Do, do you think it would be a female? Yeah, but a small female. So please, you must be very much careful here. Yeah. So this is a lion's country. <laughs> Reading the spore and the behavior of the other animals we pass are second nature to Frank. What he also knows is that the lions will almost certainly see us before we see them. God, I'm really feeling the heat now. 
Are you fine? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, good. It's hot and thirsty. This is Tanzania. It's a little bit hot here. Yes. What is that? Uh, this one? Yeah. Gilia, a sausage tree. Sausage? Yeah, sausage tree. Time for a little snack, yeah, I think. A fruit to yeah. brew, to ferment. Yeah. Alcohol, this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol. Yeah, that's right. Get very drunk on that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice sort of uh, cocktail hour. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Blow your head on. Right. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. And you suck the seeds then. It's dry. Yeah. You suck the seeds. <laughs> I've read about the lavish food people used to have on safari. I guess it must be the recession. <laughs> you think you would die? I think I'd die. You swallow it? Oh. No, no, you just suck it. There's a lot of vitamin C. Tastes like lemon. That's right. Thank you. This is wonderful. Just like London, the huddle all this afternoon. Then banana? Yeah. Short little stubby things. Yes, I don't want to be fed too much, but it's good food for the lions. <laughs> Frank saw her first, but he didn't shout about it. Quite a dangerous animal, Very much quite yeah. In Africa, the only fear animal is a buffalo. The rules are stay very quiet, move slowly, don't stare, and don't threaten them. You a fast runner, Frank? <laughs> when it was right to stop, we did. No bars this time. Just her and us. And if she chose, she could be on us in seconds. What a sight she is. We've been very lucky and so close. Good. I think she must have eaten. We travelled further through lion country, and as the day wore on, we encountered animals looking for safe places to spend the night. Baboons, phenomenal climbers. That's the rock they climb, isn't it? Yeah, this is the rock they climb. All oh, these rocks, they... all, all these rocks. Yeah, all these rocks. That's a good advantage point, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's right. How does it go? Mad dogs and Englishmen? What a day. So, we've met a lioness in her own territory, and I've been very fortunate to have a guide who knows just what the dangers are. The queen of the beasts has shown herself, but the king is more elusive. He's out there somewhere in the dark. And I'll try to find him tomorrow. We're now flying over the active volcano Baldonio Lengai, on the way to meet the Maasai. Lengai is their sacred mountain. A long time ago, God gave the Maasai the gift of cattle. This is their wealth. The lions are one of their greatest foes, for when the wild prey is scarce, the lions attack the cattle. The Maasai are fabled warriors, proud, even arrogant. Manhood must be won, and traditionally, that is by killing a lion. <laughs> he's the chief of this village and also he's the ruler of all the Maasai in this part. He was a good fighter. He was able to kill a number of lions and that's through those um, 
uh, qualification he was selected as the rule of the master. Yeah. And these are my mother and uh, my sisters. I got some strange greetings. <laughs> and, uh, these are the warriors, the very important group, because they are the one to maintain peace and security among the whole tribe. And also they have to go out to other tribe and raid cattle to increase the wealth of the society. Land just around. It's around here, but right now they will have to go very far away, about 10 kilometers to the forest area, yes. because this place is very dry now. Yes. I told that God offered you <laughs> knowledge or cattle, and you chose what? Uh, cattle. Cattle. <laughs> and finally, you own all the cattle in the world. All the cattle in the world are ours. In England, in America? In America, no matter which kind of part of the world, they are our cattle. Oh, and so. that's why when we go to raid cattle, we never use the word stealing. We are not stealing, but we are bringing them back because we got them from gold. Did the lions attack in this area and kill cattle? Yeah, sometimes. And this is the time when we lose a lot of cows because they go very far to the forest, the place where there are a lot of lions. The lions are frightened of men, aren't they? Yeah, but They'll they attack. are also hungry, so the warriors will make sure that the cattle are safe. Mm. One day, the lion wanted to eat one of our cows. These warriors fought with that lion, and there's got some scars here. I think you can see these are the lion's claws on the face. And there's got more scars. The lions put the here. Yes. And and the first got some clothes here too. Open. Yes. So they fought face to face because the lion jumped on the warrior and also he was strong enough to hold the lion yeah. and took the the sword and cut the head off and the lion was killed. And we celebrated because this was a very good fight. <laughs> great body. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with a spear, you don't throw it? You don't throw it unless you have got more than one spear. Yeah. Because if you throw it, the lion can lie down, then your spear will go the other direction, and still the lion can eat you. Yes. So what you will have to do, you will take like this, just cutting. You will have to have the spear on this hand, and also the sword on the other hand. And that's the sword? This is the sword. You can even cut the head of the lion you off. cut the head of the lion over there? Yeah. And that's a mark of... Uh... It's a symbol of great power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the mighty warriors, a chant. The lion's spirit is in him. Gifts will follow, wealth and wives, and a fine ostrich feather mane. In the old days, the Maasai made many lion hunts, armed only with their spears and their courage. In this dangerous pursuit, the first warrior to spear the lion is ensured a high place of honor in the tribe. It's all been going on a very long time. And I wonder how the Maasai might be if there were no lions. Our next destination is the Serengeti in northern Tanzania, the grassland of a million wildebeest. In the Serengeti, there are no herdsmen and no cattle. 5,000 square miles of savanna, home to a myriad of plains animals and the predators that stalk them. So it's the very last place you'd expect to see a cat with a collar.
First morning, we went up to try to spot the lions from the air. Hey! <laughs> lions travel great distances and are often hard to find. The Serengeti Lion Research Team can pick up the signals from the radio collars on the lions below. The Lion Research Project is one of the longest-running animal studies in the world. The lions have been studied since 1966, and the project aims to understand the behavior and ecology and the life of the pride. Once a lioness had been located, we home in on the ground. Research team need to replace her collar and find out what she's been doing since they last studied her. But first, they have to dart her. Now, your job is to hold that straight up in the air. Yeah, yeah. this one. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to give her the full... full You're going to inject me? No. <laughs> Try a wildlife vet has joined the lion researchers for this day's operation. You need one and a half. Yep. Got him? Got him? Like, see the first thing she does? Yes. Let's go for the dart. But it's, it's in, it's better than there now, isn't it? She's, she's yeah. taking it out. See, she's got it in her mouth. Yes. But the drug is in. It's in there. It, it was in long enough down. that it should have injected. Yeah. Yeah. She's starting mm -hmm. getting high now, isn't she? See, it's, it's like she just got bitten by a big insect. Okay, pre-op stuff. And she has no idea that this car was responsible. Yeah. <laughs> and and now what about the other one? Um, when when you're ready to go in? We'll, we'll try and move her the car. Yeah. That she'll we'll just move gently. Off. You know, we'll just gently persuade her to leave. Some say that a big cat with a collar looks quite tame. But I wouldn't want this one to wake up near me. The other pride members moved off. Everyone now hopes the tranquilizer works. Good color, like you look this nice pink. This tells her blood pressure is good. How long does she stay out? About now? Immobilized enough that we can safely handle her, probably 45 minutes an hour. I never imagined I'd be this close to one. Keep her. Make sure her eyes stay on that yellow pad. Okay. Big tummy. Well, what we do is take blood samples and then look for antibodies to different infectious diseases. These particular cats, we already know, have a virus that's actually related to the human AIDS virus. Is that quite widespread in this area? It seems to be. Um, this is quite a moment. Everything about her is supercharged. All the equipment for survival. There are between two and 18 lionesses in the pride. They're all closely related, mothers, daughters, sisters, granddaughters. And I'm told that lions don't have to live in groups. They hunt very successfully on their own. And they don't have to share the food they catch. But there are advantages. In prides, the cubs can suckle from any mother with milk. But even in the security of this extended family, two-thirds of the cubs will die before they're a year old. If the herds move away, they starve. But for the moment, there are plenty of things to hunt, or try to. The cubs think anything is fair game. Thousands of hours of study have produced an intimate portrait of the lioness's life on the plains, living by her wits, bringing up her children, and helping to answer scientific questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
One reason that I try to collect hair from all these animals is that a lot of contaminants are actually deposited in hair. Yeah. And you can tell the last six months of this animal's life what it has been exposed to. And we honestly know nothing about contaminants here in the Serengeti. But carnivore is the best place to start looking for yeah. contaminants. Take them in their food right. in right. there. Right, and because they are at the top of the food chain. She was done what, uh, eight weeks ago, did you say? Yeah. Uh, eight weeks ago. Yeah. Nice heavy breathing. Hide. I do. When the sisters start snoring. Seek. When they come round, you put them on their on their bellies, so that they're, and uh, it's incredible. You can hear it from half a kilometre. Huh. Love when they purr. Yeah. The work of the Lion Research Project has increased knowledge of the lion and its needs so that it may have a better chance of surviving into the next century. The only real danger to lions is losing their habitat. A rising human population demands ever more space, but for the time being, enlightened thinking in Tanzania has ensured the preservation of many of these valuable areas. For the lions at present, there is enough to eat and time to sleep it off. Yeah. You put side? your arm under her neck, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna push. and you hold hold of that leg, then it won't. That's no, the girl. She's quite a weight. Must be 300 pounds. Yeah, sure temperature is, is not dangerous at this point at all. Yeah. Pouring water on her helps to cool her off. Mass, it's very hot today. I think she may be starting to wake up. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. Okay, girl. She's doing really well. Now, before I came to Africa, I never thought I'd be holding a lion by the tail. The power there, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I wonder why it's so ragged. There is a strong sense of continuity of life here in Serengeti. Generations of lions whose fate depends on the ebb and flow of their migratory prey. I'm on my way now to a place where the lions are less dependent on the migration of animals. To an extinct volcano where live some of the largest lions in the world. Ngorongoro Crater in Tanzania is one of the most spectacular places on Earth. 2,000 feet to the crater floor. Twelve miles across, the volcano is now dormant, but its placid-looking surface is a wild and savage place. And with a wildlife camera team. I caught distant glimpses of male lions in the Serengeti, but nothing had prepared me for this. This is the, God, the sheer size God. of the males, isn't it? They weigh twice the weight of two very big men. It's extraordinary. They're, they're well over 400 pounds. Where would they come from, the Serengeti? Or? But they may have been born here, and yeah. then they had to move out because there was pressure from older males. Now they're mature, and well, they're coming back to see how they get on now. Yes. They're mature. Cameraman Hugh Maynard has photographed wildlife all over the world. Yes. But for him, the crater is one of the most magical locations of all. Its soda lakes are host to thousands of flamingos, sieving food from the water. The picture of elegance. At 
five and a half thousand feet above sea level, the crater gets plenty of rain. Along the edge of the lakes, there is an abundance of grass right through the year. Grass which sooner or later gets turned into flesh. So, well, seemingly docile, they've got used to Land Rovers and vehicles, are they? Yes. That's what makes the crater so special for animal behaviourists or filmmakers. It's pretty, yes, my, it's it's looking straight back. Yes. Huh. Wouldn't like to tangle with him. The King of the Beasts, right outside the window. What a head. Yeah. He knows himself, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, there's a lot of confidence there, yes. isn't there? No apologies. Hugh Maynard had been following the prides here for a couple of months, and now even I began to get to know them. The males are a massive 450 pounds of muscle, and obviously built for offensive purposes. But they are usually affectionate to the other members of the pride. Cubs stay in the pride until they're three or four years old while they practice their hunting. The sheer power of the king of the beasts should make him a terrific predator, but he is so large the prey usually sees him first and makes its escape. As far as hunting goes, the females seem to do it all. The big males and their manes are so conspicuous that they regularly wreck the opportunities for the females too. The females do most of the killing, don't they? Yes, they're, they're definitely the most athletic and they do it. They do all the chasing. Although the male will keep up and will possibly come in and do the final coup de grace. And then he takes all the pickings. And, it? <laughs> and then, yes, he's the most dominant. So if he's hungry, he gets the food. When there's prey about, the lionesses are the ones to keep your eyes on. The crater seems to have more meat-eaters per square foot than anywhere in the world. 
a procession of birds of prey arrives for the scraps and the leftovers, along with some jackals. But the lions come first. The male fought everyone off the first zebra. Fortunately, the lioness has grabbed another one further down the marsh. Coming to the kill for the first time were some very young cubs with their mother. The male lion was particularly aggressive and kept them all at bay. So the lion, or the king of the beasts, is not quite so noble after all. Yesterday, for instance, the lionesses we were following killed two zebra. The male claimed one and wouldn't let the others in the pride anywhere near their carcass. During the night, one of the cubs, maybe through hunger, got too close and the lion killed it. The lioness took the body and tried to bring it back to life but it was too late. Why the male killed the cub is a mystery. Possibly it was an accident. But I'm told males are often overprotective and clumsy near a kill. It was dark and it was the first time he'd encountered them. Perhaps it was just hunger that led its mother and the other cubs to eat the body the next morning. Or perhaps some instinct that will never be understood. They tell me that the males are usually not so aggressive to their families. They'll kill cubs if they want to take over a pride so that they don't have to waste time on other males' children. But apparently, it's very rare for a male to kill one of its own. Cubs usually receive affection from him and the other members of the pride. So the male occasionally kills his stepsons and stepdaughters. But then I suppose many rulers have done that and have continued to reign over their kingdoms for many years. So, who were we to judge the lion? <laughs> Daybreak. The pride is resting now. Something they do for up to 20 hours a day keeps them out of trouble. But guinea fowl on the move through the pride are always worth considering. The individual characters and the smaller day-to-day -day details of lions' lives are just as rewarding to see as the dramatic moments. Uh, 300 it's, uh, a bit closer, it? Yeah, it'll just Little escapes Hugh Maynard's watchfulness. Great kings wait imperiously for their dinner to be caught for them. So, whatever happened to the rampant lions of Royal Crest? 
the males seem to be much lazier, don't they? They much more yeah. than the well, females. Well, they both sleep an incredible amount, mm. but um, I suppose the females are a little bit more alert, just for looking for prey. And what you told me, the, the, the male function is just to procreate, is just to yeah. Yeah. fertilize the egg. Yeah. Yeah. They don't seem to do much. The core of the pride is the females, yeah. Even when it comes to procreation, these kings don't seem that enthusiastic. They a... They'll get together. Yes, she's definitely keen. The grace and the powers. Yes. When new males enter the pride, the females flirt with them ceaselessly. <laughs> encouraging him. Well, she, is that a, a, a sexual encouragement? I think so, yes. Yeah. Beautiful addition. He doesn't seem to give a damn. No. Nope. He's got it made. Yeah. Yes, he's a real male chauvinist. Yeah. What's the gestation period in pregnancy? Four months. Oh, that's, that's fast, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That's very fast. And the, the cubs are brought and blind and very helpless. Um, so they, can, they take a lot of looking after. They have to be left in a, in a den yeah. where no uh, hyenas can find them, no other lions can find them. The cubs are less than three weeks old and their eyes have only just opened. They've been hidden away in a den because hyenas, leopards and other prides will kill them if the mother is away hunting. So it is quite unusual to see cubs this young. They don't usually show themselves for another few weeks until they are strong enough to be taken to join the pride. This may be several miles away and the cubs face many hazards along the way. The cubs haven't walked far before, but certainly have never had to swim a stream. Sometimes the jaws can be very gentle. On the long journey to the pride, the mother must be vigilant. Predators will kill the cubs if they can. Males are very dangerous if they're from another pride. This male is a well-established member of her own pride, so she is safe for the moment. The cubs are totally dependent on milk to start with. They don't eat meat for a month or two. Black Rhino, a rare surprise. The 
The last few yards to the pride are always the most anxious. The two pride males have accepted her cubs. They are very effective protectors of the group. This is one of the major roles of the King of the Beasts. Once he has got his mane, he is a guardian rather than a hunter. But one of the lionesses is not so sure about the cubs. Lionesses are probably sisters, but the one without the cubs feels threatened. Who knows what was in her mind? During these days in the crater, I have begun to realize that lion society is not quite what I thought. It is not run by the magnificent maimed lions I saw all those years ago. It is the lionesses who are in charge, who defend the territory from generation to generation. The kings of the beasts fight to possess a pride, but their reign is limited to two or maybe three years. Then they are ousted by others. So my brief study of lions has been quite a revelation. In a strange way, it changes one's perspective of human behavior, the eternal puzzlement as to why we are so aggressive and destructive and constantly at war. It is all about territory and resources. Perhaps we haven't evolved very far after all. One thing hasn't changed. For me, the power of a lion's eyes is still fascinating. They lock, lock eye contact, aren't you? It really is awesome. Do you get scared? Oh, oh yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, you do? Yes. That's really so, Sometimes, as you say, when they lock on, yeah. then they, they burn holes, two holes, right through your brain, don't they? It really is tremendous. Great eyes, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. A herd of buffalo has her undivided attention. Buffalo can defend themselves and their calves very well. They're still one of the most feared animals in Africa. Many a buffalo has gored a lion with the devastating hook of its horn and then trampled it to death. A solitary lion doesn't do well against buffalo, but they're a big prize, and it is large animals like these that encourage lions to gang up together. Maybe the answer to our questions, why do we admire the lion's ferocity? Why do we revere them? lies in the recognition that we are as they are. They form alliances when the need arises, and when the chips are down, they win the day by sheer numbers. The might and ferocity of the pride, mob rule, is unleashed.
Lion and buffalo meet in a fearsome collision, and the gods of the grass must choose between titans. Hey. Hello. Hello. 